Welcome back to my channel. This story is by Joe Barrett in the Wall Street Journal. Terry Seward tried for years to recoup thousands of dollars she and her husband had lent to a fellow pickleball enthusiast. Then, at a tournament in Florida this past December, she had a terrible thought. What if they weren't alone? The couple would eventually uncover a scandal that has ensnared hundreds of people and tarnished the name of a man. Pickleball News dubbed the burgeoning sport's ultimate ambassador. Rodney Rocket Grubbs, 68, of Brookville Indit. Bob Zitnick, a 64-year-old engineer from Brookville, said he and his wife lent Grubbs about $300,000 for real estate deals starting in 2007. Zitnick said the couple was initially able to get some of the money back, but the payout stopped in 2018, and they now hold promissory notes worth more than $3 million. You just never would think he would do this, Zitnick said. And then you wonder, am I stupid? Grubb's creditors lament that they were vulnerable to manipulation by someone they knew and trusted. The affair has entangled the reigning senior national pickleball champion, droves of retirees, and a priest. Grubbs owes money to more than 500 creditors spanning more than 30 states and several countries for pickleball and other ventures, according to court filings. He was like Barney Fife, said Seward, 67, of White Springs Fla. He's just this affable, you know, bumbling kind of character, and you wanted to help him. Grubbs hasn't been charged with a crime. The Securities Division of Indiana's Secretary of State issued a cease and desist order forbidding him from issuing further notes, alleging he was breaking state securities laws. The investigation is open, a spokeswoman said. A group of creditors earlier this year forced Grubbs into involuntary bankruptcy after confronting him during a two and a half hour hearing in federal bankruptcy court in Indianapolis. He closed his pickleball rocks store and stopped going to tournaments. In court filings, Grubbs claimed assets of $1.6 million. Grubbs has said he never issued a loan he didn't intend to repay. In April, he greeted a visitor cordially on the porch of his wood frame home in Brookville, declining to comment for this article at that time. He later answered questions by email, denying that he had any hidden assets and saying he had hoped to revive his business, which had taken a big hit during COVID, up to the moment it was shut down. Grubbs said he took early retirement from at and after working there from 1983 to 2003, supplementing his income at various times with gigs including peddling Amway, buying rental properties, and financing house flippers. Fellow tennis player Marilyn Hedrick, an 87-year-old retired insurance company customer representative, introduced Grubbs to the world of pickleball in 2008. She, along with her partner, Larry Sheets, and another couple, Charlie and Betty Allen, had discovered the sport a few years earlier. They built some of the Midwest's first courts in Brookville, and they wanted more players. Their instructions to me were, okay, you know everybody in town, so it's your job now to get people to play, Grubbs said in a 2021 YouTube interview. A homemade t-shirt, Pickleball Rocks, Ask Me How, would soon become Grubbs' trademark. He began selling t-shirts and paddles out of his trunk, crisscrossing the country to attend tournaments where he advised players on how to help the sport grow in their hometowns. Seward and her husband, Scott, met Grubbs at a tournament in 2017. About a year later, she said, Grubbs started hitting them with his pitch. One of six investors backing Pickleball Rocks had decided to cash out and he needed to fill the slot. Grubbs swore the couple to secrecy Terry Seward said, so his competitors wouldn't know the source of his funding. The couple agreed to invest $25,000 in 2019, Seward said. 18 months later, they asked for their money back, but Grubbs said the pandemic had cut off his access to tournaments. They gave him until September 2022, when Grubbs again said he couldn't pay. That's when we started getting nervous, Seward said. At the December tournament in Holly Hill Fla, Seward began to suspect that Grubbs wasn't selling paddles so much as investments and began asking other players about him. The first person she asked, Seward said, told her Grubbs had taken her money and she couldn't get it back. She's about to cry, and that's when I got my dander up, Seward said. Seward began contacting others in the pickleball world, eventually starting a Facebook group called 
from pickleball. The day after the transfer arrived, Seward said, she contacted Matt Foster, an Indianapolis attorney whose name she had seen on lawsuits filed against Grubbs by real estate investors in other states. Foster now represents more than 300 clients with claims against Grubbs going back to the early 2000s. Scott Seward, meanwhile, spoke with an official with Indiana's Secretary of State office. Hedrick, during a recent morning of play at a Brookville gym, was wearing a Pickleball Rocks t-shirt with the word Rocks covered up. She invested $115,000 with Grubbs between November 2022 and October 2023, months before his empire collapsed. He paid back one $15,000 note with interest and made other payments totaling about $4,500, she said. She remains haunted by how much he pushed her to dig into her nest egg, she said. He knew he was going down, she said. And why would he take advantage of an 87-year-old friend when he did that? Please share, like, comment, and follow for more content. Please support my channel and send it to Director 327 Thank you for your gift. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching.